Uh, I'm Larry Bauer, Chief Executive Officer of the Family Medicine Education Consortium. And uh, one of the issues that we as an organization are very concerned with is the production of medical school graduates to family medicine and primary care. And I had the great opportunity to talk to Dr. Howard Bergman uh, a few months ago about the what I call the success story at McGill University. And while I recognize that Canada is a separate country with its own policy, culture, um, I think some of what he's going to share with us today uh, has some implications for uh, U.S. medical schools. And so I'm very uh, appreciative uh, that he is willing uh, to uh, present. His presentation will be followed by reactions from Dr. Russ Phillips, who is a director of the Harvard Medical School Center for Primary Care, and by Dr. Larry Culpepper, uh, formerly the chair of family medicine at Boston University. And so what I will do now is move to Dr. Bergman, and let me introduce Dr. Howard Bergman, who is chair of the Department of Family Medicine and professor of medicine, medicine and oncology, and the Dr. Joseph Kaufman, Chair of Geriatric Medicine at McGill University. Dr. Bergman, uh, take it away. Okay, thank you. Can everybody hear me uh, okay? Larry, you can hear me okay? It's coming across. Yes, it's coming across very clear. Okay, so I'm going to speak for a maximum of 20 minutes. Larry, please, if I go over my time, just uh, yank the phone or or yell out. Um, so thank you very much for this for this opportunity. Uh, so let me get in right to the topic. Um, and what we're talking about is our efforts and our our success and sometimes less than success in attracting uh, medical students uh, to the residency program and, and to a career in uh, in family in family medicine. But I decided to. Um, uh, to the title is Family Medicine and McGill, an academic discipline whose time has come, uh, because I think uh, that issue of an academic discipline whose time has come is very closely related to our capacity to attract uh, medical students. So the context, Larry said it, uh, Canada is still a separate country, as Larry put it. Um, uh, we, you know that we have a Canadian public universal single-payer system, uh, Canada is a federal system. It's actually the provinces that manage the healthcare system. What I'm going to describe is what happening is happening in our province, but it's basically the same thing in other in other provinces. Uh, the other thing that's important to know that essentially all primary medical care is done by family physicians. Um, and in fact, if you look down the road, um, uh, specialties like uh, pediatrics will be doing less and less of primary care and will be consultants. Um, so the number of pediatric residency positions has been declining while the number of family medicine residency positions has been increasing. Um, finally, what you have to know in Quebec and in most provinces, it's the government that determines the, num the total number of residency positions as well as positions by specialty. Um, for the whole province and uh, for each of the four uh, medical students. So here, here's the background. In, in, in 2008, I'm on to slide three. In 2008, uh, a little under 20% of McGill medical graduates chose a career in family medicine uh, anywhere in Canada. And um, that was the lowest percentage of all the 17 Canadian medical schools, uh, well below the average. Um, and we, we had 20 unfilled positions in the first iteration of what we call the CARMS match. You probably have another name for the, the match. Um, and only 13 McGill medical students were admitted to the family medicine program. Um, so that was a bit of a, a wake-up call um, for McGill uh, at, at that point, even though the um, the uh, program had existed for, for some time. So the question is, what would attract the best 
not just attract students, but what would attract the best students, slide number four, to family medicine. And I put three points that I, can, I consider as essential. Is one, the discipline has to be valued and promoted by the government and the population. Um, and there has to be optimal practice context and conditions, including but certainly not limited to remuneration. Um, the second point I think which is essential is the discipline has to be valued and promoted by the universities and by the faculties of medicine. Um, we'll never attract family medicine residents in a university, in a faculty of medicine that does not value uh, family medicine. And third, and that's, that's our challenge, is family medicine has to become, work to become a respected academic discipline supported by research funding agencies and recognized by its peers. Uh, for those, for me, those are the three essential elements that we need, that need to, that elements that need to come together if we're going to be successful in attracting not just students, but the best students to, to family medicine. So family medicine in Canada and McGill in Canada and Quebec has become, is, is a constant progression. Um, and I was, had the honor of being on what you see here on the slide number five, the Clare Commission, which was an independent royal type commission set up by the Quebec government to uh, examine and make recommendations on the reform of the healthcare system. It's quite clear there's a global consensus um, in Canada and Quebec in particular. And this, this commission said something very simple. Primary care is the foundation of a sustainable health care system. Uh, lots of people say it now. Not a lot of people said it at that time. And, in fact, one of my former deans, after the report came out, he said, what do you mean? You forgot about the, you forgot about the university hospitals uh, because, because a, lot of, you know, a lot of the report was devoted to strengthening primary care, and I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, family medicine was even formally recognized as a specialty in Canada, although as a, as a discipline and as a college of family physicians has been a lot, around a long time. It's quite clear that in, in Quebec and in Canada, it's a government priority, the development of primary medical care. And in Quebec, interesting enough, it's been a major issue in the last two elections. So people are not complaining about access to cardiac surgery. They're complaining about access to and the importance of access to primary medical care. And primary, primary, primary care research is getting much more attention from Canadian and provincial research funding uh, organizations. The other thing I think we need to say, and I don't see the number on it, but it's, it's slide number six, is uh, the Clare Commission, the commission I was talking about in 2000, which I was on, the, the, the signature recommendation, and I'm proud to say I was the author of that recommendation, was the creation of the medical home. This was in 2000. Uh, and we call it in Quebec the Groupe de Médecine de Famille, family medicine groups, as a key integrating factor in our, in our healthcare system. And this was a major reform of primary uh, medical care. And, uh, and uh, I, I put some of the elements that you probably know about, of key elements of a, of a, of a medical home and a family medicine group. Uh, set up at that time as six to ten family physicians working with uh, nurse clinicians um, in an interdisciplinary practice with with registered or rostered uh, populations. Uh, that this whole thing is a whole other discussion, but I can tell you from zero in 2001, uh, there are now over 260 family medicine groups that cover about 60 percent of the population, and it's going to continue. Uh, increasing, and what we're seeing is other healthcare professionals are being added to these family medicine groups. But that would be a whole other discussion, so I'm not going to get into that. So, so in, a after that wake-up call in 2008, you remember the 20 unfilled positions, uh, only 13 medical students from McGill came to family medicine. The dean at that time, Rich Levin, who's now head of the I believe it's called the Gold Foundation um, in, in New York, uh, mandated a task force to, to look at this. The task force was chaired by somebody from Family Medicine, Internal Medicine, 
and the report was released in 2009. I'm not going to go into all the elements, but they address a whole series of issues, including the admission process, the undergraduate medical education, the, the hidden curriculum, or maybe the subliminal and sometimes not such subliminal messages that uh, that uh, some of our colleagues uh, tell the students, like, oh, I can't believe you're considering family medicine. You're too good for that. Uh, it addressed the development of research in family medicine at McGill and, the, and marketing, the importance of marketing family medicine at, at McGill. Uh, the literature showed and, and the questionnaire at the same time that the importance of, um, of longitudinal exposure to family physician role model is essential, critically important for medical student career uh, choice. And this was expressed as a, as a weakness in, uh, at, at McGill. Um, so one of the main, and I won't go through all the recommendations of this task force, and remember this task force was created by the dean. It wasn't created by family medicine, it was created by the dean. And I can tell you that essentially all of the recommendations of the task force were implemented or are still being implemented. One of the most important ones was that the creation of this longitudinal family medicine experience where, um, and I'm now on to uh, the 11th slide, where all first-year medical students now at McGill, this began this past September, uh, uh, attend a, a practice of a family physician for two afternoon sessions uh, for, um, for the whole first year. So it's, it's over, over 10 months. Uh, this is one of, I'll come back to this, this is one of the be careful what you wish for uh, because it meant we had to find 190 spots in family physicians' offices in Montreal and create a whole curriculum uh, around this. So you can, just, you can just imagine not only the challenge of creating this curriculum, of preparing the physicians, but the logistics of finding physicians willing to do this for for not much uh, remuneration. Um, that that those changes came along at the same time with a major um, with a major curriculum review uh, at at McGill, um, and I listed the five crucial areas of key elements of this curriculum review, primary medical care, public and population health, lifelong uh, learning, evidence-based medicine, who can be against that, and interprofessionalism. So, um, uh, McGill, like most of your schools or most of your uh, medical schools. You know, McGill is sometimes called the Harvard of the North. Um, we call Harvard the McGill of the South. But, um, you know, like many of the major academic medical centers, maybe I shouldn't say this, this is being recorded and it's going to be put on, it's going to stay for a permanent, but sort of the, 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 the medical school were a bit like neurosurgeons when they walked, their feet didn't touch the ground. They happened to be in Montreal, and the province of Quebec, but it was really a very international school, et cetera. And I think over time, for many different reasons, uh, McGill, the Faculty of Medicine, understood that it has to have social responsibility and accountability for the healthcare system in which it finds itself. So, in fact, um, the incoming dean who replaced followed Dean, dean Levin, uh, David Eidelman, I'm going now on to the the next slide, which is a picture of David Eidelman visiting one of our family medicine units, clearly stated that for him, family medicine is an academic priority. And when he recruited me, he said, Howard, we don't really need you for improving the residency program, etc. What I want is to uh, work toward being as good as medicine and psychiatry and surgery as an academic uh, discipline. And this picture that you're seeing was taken 
at the time, this is a French newspaper in Montreal, this was his first major interview. And basically, the whole interview was about about family medicine. Um, the 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 faculty of medicine is coming, and, and just we can go on to the slide 14, which I stole from David Eidelman, uh, where you can see what he thinks about family medicine. And the McGill, the faculty of medicine, is producing a new strategic research plan, and family medicine is. Uh, is very much a part of that. Now, let me also say that one, one of the things that we're doing is being very present in this undergraduate medical curriculum with the medical students, but I mentioned that, that uh, one of the important things we looked at is marketing of family medicine. And we do that in, in various ways, in a very active way. We do that help with medical students who already have an interest in family medicine, and they have an association uh, which actually receives funding from the government. Isn't that interesting? And and what this association does is has a whole series of, of activities throughout the four-year life of a medical student to promote family, family medicine. Um, we're also very much involved in research and scholarly projects, et cetera. One of the type of activities we held was a, uh, uh, what we call in French, a cinq à sept, a five to seven, a, a cocktail, a wine and cheese at the end of the, at the end of the day. And we invited the medical students who are interested in the research as their career to come to see us and understand the potential for research, an academic research career in, uh, in family medicine. Not a lot of people showed up and for various reasons, but I, I chatted with with most of the students, but one student was particularly interesting. I said, why are you here? He said, well, I'm wavering between pediatrics and family medicine, and I'm going to um, choose on the basis of where I can develop an academic research career. And um, so that, that, that aspect brings me to how we see our department and how our department has developed from an academic point of view and brings me back to a bit of the first few points that I said. So, recognition by the government, we have it more and more by the population, recognition, um, promotion by the dean and the medical school, we have that more and more, and the development of our academic capacity um, as, a, as in research. So, I'm gonna quickly go through, and now I'm on to I don't remember what number, 14, 15, I suppose. The department's overarching goal, you have these slides, so I'm not gonna read it out, but just how we see ourselves and the, our raison d'etre, our reason for being uh, of, of, our, of our department. As you can see, research and scholarly activity is important, uh, curriculum innovation, education, research, engaging in international and global health. For sure, training residents is our, is our uh, core business. By the way, residency programs in Canada, contrary to the U.S., are programs that belong to the university um, uh, and not to the hospitals. Uh, the key instrument of where our residents are trained is the family medicine unit, uh, which are really McGill University primary care clinics or what we can call really McGill University family medicine centers. Um, for care, education, and, and research. Uh, slide 17, we have a lot of faculty, uh, close to 200 full-time, and a lot of part-time people. Most of them are in the units, family medicine units. Other work in hospitals, rural settings, ERs, etc. cetera. Um, so we have 115 or so full-time uh, uh, faculty members in our family medicine unit, 215 part-time. So we have six family medicine units, three in Montreal and three outside of Montreal and one uh, very far from Montreal, an hour and a half by plane. Uh, there's an optional six-month rural stream and we presently have in our, unfortunately it's only a two-year program with a, with a, a volunteer, voluntary uh, a third-year program in enhanced skills in all, we have a, 
about uh, we have uh, this year 87 incoming uh, R1. It's going to be going up to 107. We have 200 residents in all, probably be going up to 250. Our recent successes, we did very well in the recent accreditation by the College of Family Physicians. You could read those numbers as well as I can. The good news in those numbers is, is that more and more, so in 2012, we had 84 spots in the CARMS, which is a Canadian match. And this was, I, I took on the position officially April 1st, 2012. The match was held before and was announced actually early March. I came in later, but I decided to take, I would take credit for the fact that all of our 84 spots were, were filled on the first iteration at one of three medical schools in Canada that did that. The next year, not quite as good, 80 of the 84 spots. And this year, 86 of 87 spots, the largest number of family medicine residents entering McGill in our history. Excellent quality of residents, and that's very important for me, is improving the quality of residents. A disappointment in the number of medical students from McGill has actually decreased slightly, those coming into family medicine. What has increased is the number of students from other Quebec medical schools that have have, uh, have matched and come to our to our residency program. So next slide, we're a major player. I talked about longitudinal family medicine experience. We're also present at other at other levels, including the clerkship rotation of eight weeks, which is going to be which is going to change a little bit in the next while. We're a growing academic discipline, slide 22, graduate studies, research, faculty development, uh, continuing professional development and global health. I'm, I'm just going to mention, and you could look at this as well as I can, um, this is slide 23. Sometimes the number appears, sometimes it doesn't on the slide. I'm, I'm proud to boast about this because most of this has been done my, by my predecessors, so it's, I'm boasting about the work that other people have done. Uh, but we have a solid group of, of PhD scientists who are full-time faculty members from assistants to uh, associate professors. Uh, we have 11 clinician scientists. What I mean by that is clinicians, the way I describe it is people who do 50% clinical work and 80% research and live and die by their research. We have five full professors, four who are tenure, we have eight associate professors, so three tenured, et cetera, et cetera. And people have done well uh, in career awards, which you don't have in the States, but we have because we can't take salary out of a operating grant. We have people successful, very successful in operating grants, and a whole varied research themes and, uh, and methodologies, particularly well known for participatory research, which our department is a leader, and, uh, and, mix, and mixed methods. We also have a very interesting there's a, there's a, I could see there's a, uh, uh, a spelling mistake, a very uh, interesting and exciting um, uh, a graduate studies program, uh, a recognized master's program, um, and a recognized PhD program. It's, got, it's ad hoc for the moment. You could see the numbers there. Um, and a clinical scholars program, in other words, an enhanced skills uh, R3 option for medical, for residents who want to start some research training and then can flip it into uh, 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 doing a full-fledged master's as the as a, 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 a subsequent step from, from that. Um, and if I go on to the next slide, um, uh, I'm Sorry, the next slide is the conclusion, and I'm going to end with that slide, is what are future perspectives and challenges. One is be careful what you wish for. So we've gone from a situation where the narrative in the department was nobody likes us, nobody gives us resources, everybody hates us, everybody's against us. And I've said to our department, because I still hear that a little bit, that's not true anymore. And really, our problem now is everybody loves us. And when the dean gives us resources, and he has, uh, he's, he's actually issuing a challenge to us that we have to meet expectations. 
and we have to manage expectations and we have to manage the expansion of our program. We need to, we need to attract more McGill medical students. So we've increased our numbers. We're matching, you know, virtually every spot we have, but we still need to do better with our own McGill medical students. Our family medicine units, these university family medical centers, traditionally very strong in teaching and care as part of their mission. We now have to make sure that teaching care and research, we're in the process of developing practice-based research networks, and um, uh, that's going to be a very important, important part. And our family medicine unit as drivers of innovation, which I'm not sure they always are. And finally, academic and capacity building for clinician educators, clinician scientists, and PhD uh, researchers. So I'm going to stop there. You have uh, uh, I've put I've put on also some additional slides. If this isn't enough, and if you haven't fallen off to sleep, you can look at them just before you go to bed. It's very nice. These extra slides, and I'd be happy to answer any questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bergman.